Uh, I just, uh, it's on me. I did not do a great job of uh, having this uh, football team uh, prepared and ready to play uh, at a high level. Um, you know, I thought the guys, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of telling football how momentums can swing and how uh, things in the game can, can change quickly. And uh, we weren't able to, to capture the momentum once it, uh, once it changed. Uh, for a little while, we were going back and forth, and uh, it was competitive football. And then, you know, we started making some critical mistakes. And, um, and then they found, some, you know, they found some, some answers and made some adjustments that we could not uh, adjust back to. Made a lot of sense, right? If Musk pulls me out for a play, don't burn a right. if you need him for a game. At that point and at this moment, do you have a plan in terms of now that you've used Calandria as a year, are, are you committed to him kind of going forward? And what is the outlook for Musk? Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that as a staff, and, and I don't know what the, the severity is with Musket. Um, you know, they're, they're preliminary saying high ankle sprain, and so I don't know uh, the timetable on that. I know that he uh, he got taped up and tried to go, and that's why you saw us go with uh, with Grady, because they said, hey, we might be five minutes, and so, hey, let's play Grady and, until we knew for sure. And then once he got taped up and, and put his shoe back on and, and tried to put pressure on, he wasn't able to go. And so that's been the plan all along, and, and we articulated that to Calandria, and he was good with it, and he understood. So uh, going forward, We'll see uh, what, what the health of uh, Tony is, and then make that determination. How would you evaluate Calandria's ready? You know, guys talking about staying yeah. ready, but it's hard. Yeah, I, I think that that you know what happened is is right out the gate, try to do a little bit too much. You know, trying to trying to force some things and. And, uh, and, and again, he hadn't played in, in four weeks, and you know he's preparing and preparing and preparing. And uh, he's a competitor, and he wants to go and, and, and find a way to help his team win. And just you know made some uh, some mistakes that, that he'll learn from, get better from, and um, and move forward. So uh, not going to say that it's on on Calandria because it's a collective effort all the way, starting with me all the way through uh, uh, everybody. We got to do a better job of. of, of uh, preparing uh, to the standard uh, so that we can play to the standard. Their quarterback in the running game, what makes it difficult when he's able to hold the ball and be patient and then, and then take off pretty quickly? Yeah, and so there's, there's, they do a great job with their scheme and knew it was going to be a challenge. You know, it's, it's, they've been putting up, you know, 500 yards of, of offense on, on pretty much everybody that they play and been very balanced. And uh, when you have a quarterback that can, that can run very similar to a running back, it gives you the ability to, to have some misdirection. And so then they force you to, uh, to, to, to really have to be in tune to your keys. And sometimes your keys are going to lie to you. And if your keys lie to you, then you're going to be late fitting. If you're late fitting and, and with what they're doing, they're going to have you outnumbered. And, and then you get to a point where you have one guy to go make a play. And uh, you saw several instances where there was one guy there to make a play, and we just didn't make the tackle. And then that's the last line of defense, and then they, they, they spit for, uh, for long runs. You know, uh, not yet, and and and, uh, and I'll know more uh, hopefully uh, uh, this evening uh, into tomorrow. Uh, knee, it's a knee on Cam uh, early on, and then uh, it was a neck on uh, uh, on Mike, and then ankle on uh, on Tony. Um, Jim, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to ask about those guys, but what about the offensive line today? Obviously, that had been moving. In yeah. You know, early on, I thought they were doing a good job. You know, early on, we were running the ball and having some success uh, running the ball. And then as the, as the game uh, went on, you know, you, you become a little bit one-dimensional. And when you become one-dimensional, um, it, it's, uh, it's heavy pass. And when, when the D-line knows it's heavy pass and they can, you know, uh, screw their cleats in the ground and get a jump, you know, it makes it, uh, it, makes it tough on you. But uh, we'll go back to work. And, man, I know those guys got a lot of pride, and uh, they've shown the resilience that they have. And uh, we'll own our mistakes. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to run from them. We're going to own our mistakes. And uh, we got what we earned today, and, uh, and we didn't put our best foot forward. And uh, these guys, uh, what I know about them, man, they'll bounce back and um, take ownership, correct the mistakes, and, and be ready to go play versus Louisville. Go ahead, Jake. Um, with Anthony Calandria, sometimes, you know, he might force a play here and there. Then that's sometimes, you know, he's got that swag, sure. that confidence. How do you balance that in a freshman quarterback when you don't want him to hold back but also not That's push right. Him? Yeah, it's a great, great question. You just try to you try to coach him through it, you know, and and uh and a lot of times he knows as soon as he as soon as he does it. And so what we have to do is 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 we just have to coach him through it and get him to understand that hey, that's not that doesn't take away from who you are, right? It actually, you know, makes you better and a more complete uh, quarterback when you understand just make the play required. And uh, for a lot of quarterbacks, in particular young quarterbacks, the play required may be check it down to the back, throw it away, 
right, to avoid uh, a negative play. And uh, but you see him, and he's such a competitor. The way he was running the ball, and you know, he's trying to scrap for for every inch. And um, you know, Coach Lamb, myself, Coach Dez, man, we'll coach him through that. Uh, I saw a little bit of progress. I did see him, you know, making, but I also saw like quickly, he's like, yeah, I recognize that I that I shouldn't do that. So, um, so we'll just we'll just keep coaching him through it. It's like a, I've been in a situation with a quarterback that threw a bunch of interceptions, and you kind of want to. You know, teeter on. You know, if you if you coach him down too much, then you take away what makes him special. So uh, we got to get him to understand the, uh, the the appropriate balance. You talked about the momentum shift early on. How much do you place that on injuries and, and turnovers? You know, more on turnovers. I mean, injuries are part of the game. And <laughs> next man up. That's 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 the mindset. So everybody's got to be ready to go, uh, and everybody gets uh, within the two deep gets the same amount of reps. Uh, from a preparation standpoint. And so it's going to be a great opportunity uh, for our guys uh, to learn and grow and say, OK, uh, where was I from a preparation standpoint? And did I did I do everything that I needed to do? Uh, and then also as coaches, did we do everything that we needed to do to have those guys uh, ready to play? But turnovers are, are more of an impact than the uh, than the because um, Calandria comes in and throws a touchdown, you know, and, and, and even though he had a couple mistakes, he's still, you know, finding a way to kind of, you know, uh, move the ball a little bit early on, but so I say the turnovers are more of an impact than the than the actual injuries. There was a, a feeling with William and Mary, Carolina, even the Miami loss, that there was a lot of progress and, and <laughs> forward momentum as a head coach. How do you keep? that feeling after a lopsided one like this? Uh, we're going to go back to uh, to understanding what what generated the success that we had. And, and I reminded the guys today in the locker room that what success that, quote unquote, we had was a function of the things that we did right in preparation, OK? We have to learn from, from this situation. And what we're not doing is we're not scrapping uh, what we're doing, OK? We're, we're, we're owning this one taking accountability for it. We're going to correct the mistakes, and we're going to continue to, to move forward. It's a part of part of the growth process. It's a part of football. Uh, but that's where you have to be able to, to compartmentalize it, you know, put it in its perspective, and then focus on uh, the, next, uh, the next play. Did you see a dip or a change in the preparation of focus going into this one? You know, um, I wouldn't say I saw a dip. Uh, but, but what, uh, you know, we're all going to learn is, I mean, you got to respect every opponent. And, and, you, and when, you, when you have had some progress, then you can't just assume that it's going to happen, right? That's why we have the mentality of going 1-0 and every single week, right? You got you to respect every opponent. You got to respect every single rep. You got to respect every single day uh, of preparation uh, because the margin for error is, is, uh, is thin. You know, a couple of those turnovers, and it could be a different, you know, different situation. Uh, so dip in the, in the preparation, no opportunity to grow. Right. Everyone's going to have an opportunity to look in the mirror and say, OK, what can I do better? And did I right at all times? Uh, because, again, nobody's going to know fully except for the person that looks in the mirror.